In the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. If you don't like gloating and bragging, everybody, go watch Raw again. It's my recommendation here for today. Let's talk about these numbers. Raw, all-time record low. 1.53 million viewers, 0.41 in 18 to 49. Not only did last week's AW Dynamite beat an hour of Raw, it beat all three hours of Raw in 18 to 49 and in 18 to 34. It is not a lock AW will beat Raw's numbers tomorrow, but it would be a surprise if it does not beat this Friday's SmackDown numbers on FS1. AW has only beaten a .41 twice this year, both times in the last two weeks. Raw had its lowest first hour, its lowest second hour, its lowest third hour. So this was not people tuning out as the people leaving the show, uh, as the people leaving the show as it went on was at average levels. This was people not even bothering to tune in in the first place. Finished ninth in 18 to 49, trailing four NFL-related shows on ESPN, below deck, three shows on CNN. CNN shows that beat it we're all earlier in the day, so Raw was third in the time slot head head, 31st overall for the night. For those of you wondering, the football numbers in 18 to 49 were not all time record levels going up against Raw. There have been many games this season that did exactly the same as this football game did. So obviously, football did not help, but the show sucked and people weren't interested in the show. That's why it did this. It wasn't football. It also wasn't news, because I hate to tell you, but since about March or so, news has been absolutely on fire. So the idea that all of a sudden we had news programming and football programming this week, I mean, get your heads out of your asses. Raw was down 12% in viewers, 20% in 18 to 49, 29% at 18 to 34. Male viewers in particular, shockingly low, especially in WWE's usual 35 to 49 strongest point. Raw beat Dynamite slightly with women 18 to 49, tied with women 12 to 34. Raw was slightly ahead, 0.27 to 0.25 in males 12 to 34. But Dynamite won in 35 to 49, 0.57 to 0.46. The three hours. 1.63 million in the first hour, 1.51 million in the second hour, and 1.44 million in the third hour. So I obviously heard all sorts of things yesterday, including people, Brian's so excited to see Rod do so poorly. Yes, I am so excited to see Rod do this poorly. You want to know why? Because this show sucks. And as I've said a million times, they have the greatest roster of talent in the history of this business in any company ever. All Japan in the 90s, New Japan in the mid-2010s, WCW in the late 90s. There is no company ever anywhere that has had the depth of talent that WWE has. And they can't do a damn thing with it. They cannot write stories to save their lives. The shows are bottom of the barrel wretched. Yesterday, obviously when things like this happen, the first question is, well, how's Vince going to panic? What's he going to do? Going to bring back Goldberg and put the belt on him? Is he going to bring back Brock Lesnar and have him win both titles? Like, what crazy thing? We can bring back The Undertaker. And somebody goes, maybe he's going to finally call Russo. I thought, you know what? Why not? Like, honestly, who cares? It would be, at worst, a lateral move. So what difference does it make? This company is, at this point, I don't want to say it's beyond repair, but, like, we're in late 99, early 2000 World Championship Wrestling. The storylines are absolutely horrible. The usage of talent is, like, an atrocity. Yes, I am overjoyed that they are doing these terrible numbers, Because I want it to be better. Vince has got to go. Pritchard's got to go. You got to get these two incompetents out of there and put somebody with a clue in charge. Until that happens, I will continue to celebrate 
the doom of this company with the people they have in charge running this place. It's horrible. And if you're a fan, if you're one of those people that was mad at me yesterday, you should be on my side. You should be wanting the same thing so that we can actually have a competently booked wrestling promotion with the greatest talent roster in the world. It's sad. In all caps with multiple exclamation points. This is sad. And it needs to change. I don't need these numbskulls that go on the conference call and talk about how, oh, well, this is good and that's good. And, oh, I, I, you signed this deal here. It's got to get better. This is historic lows. And they're historically bad shows. And everybody with a clue knows what the problem is. And the only way to remedy this is to solve that problem. And maybe if things fall far enough, maybe at some point, somebody will wake up and solve this problem. Wasn't I told, since somebody was doing all this bragging and boasting a little bit earlier on, wasn't I told weeks and weeks, maybe months ago, this number can't get any lower? This number won't get any lower? They can't atrophy any worse? Well, they're the 31st rated show on cable with a 1.53 million average with an 0.41, 18 to 49. And it could get worse. I don't know how, you know, but it, we'll see. More programming like this is going to lead to it. More programming of what we got is going to lead to it. But don't think it can't get worse. It can. We've seen it happen. Now we've I seen the worst. I said that weeks ago. Mm. It can always get worse. Well, but I'll, accept, I'll accept that as you telling me I was correct. They're still basically at the bottom of the barrel. But they did run off some of the bottom of the barrel, that's which it, does happen year thing. over year. And this has been coming for a long time. People will point to about two years ago around this time when they every McMahon got out there, blamed Baron Corbin for everything. Oh, what a mess we are. We have been putting on some horrible programming. It's just atrophied since then. And it's, it's frustrating, as you mentioned, because of the talent roster that they have. It doesn't have to be this way. But there's that old saying that creative's got nothing for you. Guys would say that a lot. Creative's got nothing for you. Actually, you know what? Creative doesn't have anything for you, at least when it comes to the ratings. So something needs to give. Something needs to change. There needs to be some sort of shakeup. They need to realize that this is not about AEW. There's nothing here about AEW. Actually, it this is. is I about can say w a lot about AEW. But yeah, you could. But this is about WWE. This is a self This is a self caused wound that they have done to themselves, and they are doing to their fans. And any fan that wants to get out there and then looks at the AEW number tonight, which probably will drop a little bit. But let me tell you something. They're still probably going to be solidly over eight hundred thousand. Doesn't matter what AEW is doing. Right now, WWE is doing their best when it comes to Raw to slip down to that number. Their creative is terrible. Bottom line, that's it. Anybody that wants to look at AEW, oh, what about AEW? It doesn't matter about AEW. If you're a real WWE fan, this is what you should be caring about the product that they put out there. Instead of trying to make comparisons and trying to do whatabouts that always fall flat and always make you look like a chump. Period. I will do actually a, a comparison here because I was thinking about this today because I was arguing with somebody about WWE. You know what AEW has proven over the last year? That if you have, there are two options here. The greatest talent roster ever in any company or competent storytelling. We have learned over the last year that competent storytelling is trumping the greatest roster of all time. Yeah. So the issue here, and I mean, everybody knew this before, but it's like been patently obvious this year. Everybody always cries about the, the AEW women's division. And I've explained a million times, and not just the women. AEW is getting what's available to them. Because WWE went on a hiring spree, and they hired everybody! And the people that remain, not all of them, obviously there were some that AEW, that WWE had no interest in, that WWE, that AEW hired and ended up doing great things. I mean, the reality is, competent storytelling. If WWE had competent storytelling, this wouldn't even be a story, this AEW versus WWE. They would be, they would have such a long way to go to catch up. But because this storytelling is so incompetent, they are now nipping on their heels after a year. Back in a moment, Observer Live. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. 
Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.